In early 2013, we had a book called Digital Education of, of, of the Future. And uh, from this book, we distilled a set of several recommendations that I would like to share here with you and, and, uh, and see if they make sense. Uh, I think I'm not going to be as short as Mark, but I will try to be brief anyway. So, some data and overview of this course, Digital Education of the Future, was a nine week book on educational technologies deployed in the Spanish platform, Miliadas, uh, which uh, started at that, at that time, early 2013, they started in December uh, 2012 and January 2013. And uh, it was a MOOC on entirely delivered in Spanish. And there were five teachers, I was one of them, and teaching assistants also, plus one facilitator who provided the support in the forum, promoting the discussion also we talked about in the forum. And uh, there were three modules of three weeks each, human computer interaction, mobile learning, and new trends in, in education. This is more or less the structure, so it's a homogeneous structure for the three modules. Uh, each module has uh, three weeks, three lessons, and in each lesson we have approximately nine video lectures of ten minutes each. We have uh, formative assessment activities, it was a multiple choice test after each video, and there were summative assessment activities for the grading, and we have end lesson tests with a weight of 5%, uh, and module peer review activities with a weight of 10%, and then a final exam with a 25% of the grade. Um, this is a screenshot, a screenshot taken from uh, MediaDAX. So here in the bottom of the corner you have a structure of a week of a lesson with the links to the videos and exercises and assessment, summative assessment activities. On the bottom right corner you have one example of this video, the title, read description of the video itself which was hosted in YouTube and then linked from the platform. And on the top left, we have two built-in tools, social tools, to be used to promote this discussion. One questions and answers tool, one forum. And apart from this, we have three additional social tools. Facebook with a web page for the course, Twitter with hashtags for the course, and Mentor Mo, which is a tool for creating playlists of, of uh, learning resources. And uh, so, some data about the profile of the students. So we had like 5,000 <coughs> 600 students, uh, there was a passing rate of 8.15%, uh, which is the average of the most speaking fine share at eggs and Mediadas. There are three different big groups of people, uh, the larkers, which include no-shows, those that register the platform but never show up, uh, observers, those that look at some videos, which are some videos, but they never complete any assessment activities, those that they are not likely, but do not complete the course either. Um, let's say drop-ins, they start a course, but they leave at some point. Latecomers, those that do not start a course, but they enroll after they start a course, and they finish the course, and something in between. Those that do not start, do not finish. And those that complete the course here, I classify them in two groups. Those that are not engaged in the course, they complete the course with the assessment, but they do not participate in the social tools, and engaged. Those that also participate in social tools. Here you have some numbers, also number of people posting, number of posts in each of the five social tools we employ. Uh, we received about uh, 5,700 posts and the form was the tool which received most contributions from the students. Uh, well, some more data, this is a world map with the students, uh, the, the origin of the students. Spain was the, the country with the larger community. But we have also important communities from Mexico, Colombia, and Peru. And now I go with the recommendations. So, talking about the design, well, uh, the selection of the platform. Some institutions have, have agreements with big platforms, with Lucera uh, If you don't, or media if you don't have any agreement, well, try to look at your target learner. In our case, target learners were Spanish people, Spanish speaking people. And uh, at that time, we had just started, so we decided to join. And I think this was the right decision. We succeeded in the number of people that enrolled in our course. And uh, we are now in the next also, and I have to say that, well, we have courses in English, courses in Spanish, and the number of people enrolled so far in Spanish courses is more or less the same number that in the other. So 
even in a bigger platform, if you are looking for Spanish courses, maybe you will go to the Spanish platform, also the big, uh, the, the big uh, initiatives. So, course structure, well, to study a platform for strengths is very, very important. In our case, the assessment activities were used only to multiple choice tests and peer review activities because these were the two kinds that some of the allowed at that time. Uh, to follow a homogeneous structure like the one I showed you before, because uh, in this way students know what they will see in the next weeks, in the following weeks, and they can manage their time better. Um, to define a flexible assessment, well, in the graphic I showed before, Lake Commerce had a, let's say, a, the passing rate was not as low as in the rest of the people, and this was passing because we distributed most of the assessment weight uh, to the end of the course. We put most of the assessment uh, weight to the end of the course. So that people that enrolled with one week or two weeks after, after the start of the course, they could end the course, they could uh, follow the course. And also to create an attractive about video, about video is what edX called to the introductory video. So uh, it's, it's important to try to have some professional help in this because this is the first thing a student see in the platform when they, when they enroll. And this makes a decision for them if they are going to, to follow the course or they are going to enroll the course or not. More things to uh, course contents and activities. Well, we work with videos of five to minutes. Uh, and actually released a report recently and they say that uh, videos shouldn't be longer than seven minutes because the attention sh drops sharply after the minute seven. Uh, so something to, to consider when creating videos. Uh, something important is just kind of charismatic teachers as the main actors. So not everybody can be in front of the camera. Not everybody is well prepared as an actor to be in front of the camera. Even a full professional that has been teaching uh, all his life may be unnatural uh, in front of the camera. So we need to find the proper people to, to, to be in front of the camera and, and there are many things to do in MOOC so everybody can contribute uh, with their strengths in the MOOCs. Um, and to combine videos of different types, we have interviews, face-to-face -face interviews, uh, we had uh, talking head with PowerPoint slides behind, we had uh, a teacher talking to a group of students, so depending on the subject you're going to explain, you can try to find different formats for your, for your video delivery. More things, well, the time to create a MOOC is a lot, it's a lot of time, it's a huge effort, but it's important to uh, leave enough time for subtitling, captioning, and also for testing everything before releasing. Because if students find something wrong, they will complain, they will leave the course. Um, another thing, to plan a schedule with the availability of teachers and institutional resources. In our case, we have some MOOC studios, so places where you can go as a teacher and record some videos, but sometimes there are collisions between teachers, so everybody wants to have a room at the same time in the mornings or whatever, so it's important to plan this in advance also and, and, and plan this schedule. Uh, and also, it's important to have a course manager, something, someone with the whole picture of MOOC in the head. Uh, someone that knows if there are learning contents missing, uh, if there are learning contents that have not been subtitled or, or, or that the quality is poor, that checks everything. Uh, so this is another thing to consider. Accreditation, well, uh, in our case it was confusing at the beginning because MediaVex has had yet started and we didn't know what kind of certificate we could provide and there were a lot of complaints. Now it's much more clear, in edX you have, for instance, two possibilities, the Honor Code Certificate, uh, you don't have to pay for that because if that is you complete course, and you have the ID Verified Certificate, that is for the people paying uh, the beginning of the course, uh, let's say $30 or $50, something like that. And the engagement for those that pay is uh, obviously higher. Social components, we have five social tools, and this is a trade-off. If you have a lot of social tools, well, people may feel comfortable with those that use frequently, but on the other hand, many hot topics can be diluted in all these social tools. So it's harder for the teachers and for the students to look for the right contributions in the social tools or for the emerging discussions and these and this things. And uh, two more things about uh, talking about deployment and the evolution of the course. We are all learning when making MOOCs, so there are errors, there are uh, some things that go wrong. It's important to know them down and, and, and see.
see how you solve them, share them with all the stakeholders, uh, not only the teachers participate, but also, uh, let's say, audiovisual technicians, library staff, institutional staff. There are many stakeholders when you create a movie. Try to share everything with everybody so they are aware of problems and solutions for these problems. And finally, uh, about the engagement of students during the deployment. So it's important to maintain high activity in the social tools. So if we, as teachers, stop talking in the social tools, the students will stop. So it's important to try to dedicate some time to the, to the social tools as teachers. Uh, weekly notifications, this emailing, these messages to the students. Uh, it's important to that, that they are aware that the course is alive, that there are people behind working during the during the deployment and enactment of the course. But it also requires that we don't. We send a lot of females that uh, probably students will stress and, and they will say, okay, I don't bother more about this, this course, I will quit. And finally, to detect leaders and trolls in social tools, leaders can help the teacher. And uh, it's important to, to have these people that are contributing a lot every day, that are helping their peers, and, and try to maybe contact them and say, okay, uh, I will give you some guidelines as a teacher and you are the leader, so you can do this better. And to also those that, uh, that uh, send anything, send spam to the forums and these things, it's important to check, to check them and, and, and remove them from, from the course. So that's all, thank you. Thank you very much. And if you have questions,